So today we're going to start talking about sexual reproduction, which is how all of these organisms reproduce. We're actually going to be focusing primarily on human reproduction, but look how cute these are. Uh, so I want to first talk about what do we mean by sexual reproduction as opposed to asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves the fusion of an egg and a sperm to create a new individual. So that's how mosses can do sexual reproduction. They say they're not having sexual intercourse, but the egg and sperm are fusing to create a new diploid individual. Uh, sexual reproduction happens in every plant and animal group, uh, and every plant and animal has the ability to reproduce by sexual reproduction. They don't always do it, but they can. And fungi, fungi sometimes reproduce by sexual reproduction as well. Some can do sexual and asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is when an individual divides itself to create a new, indivi a new individual. And this can either be budding off some small plant. Um, plants can do this. Uh, they can send out a runner, which is a specialized stem that can then put down roots elsewhere and grow into a whole new plant. Um, some protists do this by actually um, pinching off a portion of their uh, body and that little pinched off part can become a whole individual. Um, there are other protists that can do mitosis and create a whole new individual by mitosis. Um, uh, yeast does that. Uh, bacteria and archaea do a similar process, but remember they don't have uh, a nucleus, so they can't do uh, mitosis exactly, but they do a similar process to basically make a copy of themselves uh, to do asexual reproduction. Now, the other thing that can happen is what we call cloning, where uh, a diploid individual such as, for example, a lizard, this happens in lizards, in some lizards, uh, a female can actually um, create a new generation of female lizards from her own eggs without fertilization at all. So that is a form of asexual reproduction, even though it starts with an egg. Okay, so that's the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction. Like I said today, we're going to focus on human reproduction, which is obviously sexual reproduction. Humans cannot do asexual reproduction. Um, and before we get too into it, I want to talk about the difference between sex and gender. And we sometimes use these terms interchangeable, interchangeably, but they are definitely not. Sex is a biological classification. Gender is a sociological classification or a social construct. Uh, the biological class classification is that if you are a male, you make sperm. If you make eggs, you're a female. Um, and that seems very simple and straightforward, a simple binary, and you may have heard people saying sex is not a binary, it's a, um, a spectrum, and that is actually true. There are a lot of ways to not be one or the other. In gender, the male is usually called a man and the female is called a woman. Again, this is more complicated. Um, biologically, there are a lot of ways that an individual can be intersex. Uh, that is, they can be both male and female or some indeterminate sex. There are genetic ways as a result of non-disjunction in meiosis. A person could have two X's and a Y, uh, an X and two Y's, an X and no other chromosome, just XO meaning no other, no second chromosome. You can't be Y-O. Uh, if you only have a Y, you're missing so many genes on the X that that would result in a miscarriage. That individual would not uh, develop. There are also hormonal ways that people can be intersex. Um, excessive testosterone in a female. Uh, testosterone insensitivity in a genetic male. If you have XY chromosomes, but your cells can't respond to testosterone, you will develop into an absolutely perfectly normal and biologically reproductively normal female, even though you are genetically male. 
Uh, excessive estrogen in a male can cause um, intersex. There are also people who, because of abnormalities during fetal development, simply are born with both parts. Um, so you could be a genetically XY, but have a clitoris, um, testes, and a uterus. All of that could happen, and I'll talk in a second about how that could happen biologically. But um, there are many, many ways in which people are biologically not actually clearly male or female. Now, today we're going to talk about the normal biology of male and female um, and how these, the normal way that the physiology works. And I just, but I want you to remember that nothing is as clear cut. Remember our theme, it's always more complicated in biology. And so this is a really important um, uh, truth to remember. Now, gender is entirely a sociological construct. Um, we have definitions of what we think makes a man and what makes a woman, and not everybody uh, adheres to those societal norms. There are many men who are really fairly, excuse me, fairly effeminate or feminine in their behaviors and their appearance. There are women who are very masculine in their behaviors or appearance. Um, that doesn't make them not men or not women. That's just the way a person sees themselves and the way that they want to dress or appear. Now, Transgender is a person who was assigned a specific gender, or excuse me, a specific sex at birth, um, but their personal identity doesn't correspond with that. So for example, someone who was uh, called male at birth because they had a penis and testes um, may grow up feeling like they are in fact a woman. Um, and of course, that's Bruce Jenner, now uh, Caitlyn Jenner, um, lived his whole life until he was well into adulthood as a man, and in fact was an Olympian and the uh, gold medalist in the decathlon. Uh, and um, then finally felt comfortable enough to say, I have always felt that I was a woman. And uh, had and changed to living as a woman and now goes by Caitlyn Jenner. So that's a, an example of transgender. Not all transgender people are that dramatic or do a complete transformation. Um, there are, again, a spectrum, a lot of different ways that people, people can be and can live. So I just want you to remember, we're gonna talk again about sort of the normal, the average um, of sex. Uh, and I am going to slip up and use the term man, woman, when I mean male, female. I apologize for that. But just remember that a transgender person who was assigned male at birth but lives as a woman is a woman. A transgender person who was assigned female at birth but lives as a man is a man. Okay, so um, not all men have testes, not all women have ovaries, because you have to include transgender people in those terms. Okay, so let's talk about the similarities between the male and female reproductive systems and terms that we're going to use for both of these. The primary sex organs are called the gonads. In the female, those are the ovaries. In the testes, in the male, those are the testes, excuse me. Uh, the gonads produce the sex cells, the haploid sex cells, and those sex cells are called gametes. So that's the eggs and the sperm. Gametes, as you remember, are haploid in animals always formed by meiosis. Remember, plants produce their, their gametes by mitosis. Um, the uh, ovaries produce what we call oocytes, which when they are fully mature, become eggs. And you'll hear about that in the menstrual cycle chapter or a lecture, and then the testes produce sperm. The gonads also produce hormones, which are important in development and in the maintenance of what we call secondary sexual characteristics, 
which is um, body hair and uh, muscles in men. Men do tend to have more muscles, um, breasts, wider hips, and more body fat in females. Um, the most important sex hormones for females are estrogen and progesterone. Females definitely produce a lot more of those two. Males produce a lot more of what we call the androgens. Andro literally means male, so androgen means makes male. Uh, testosterone, of course, is the best known of the androgens. Those are the most, that's the most important, uh, or the androgens are the most important hormones in males. Please keep in mind, males do also make estrogen and progesterone, and females make androgens. Okay, so it's not exclusive. Neither of these is exclusive to one sex. Now, another thing that's similar between the male and female systems is that the reproductive systems develop before birth and then sit dormant until puberty. So puberty is defined as reproductive maturity, the point at which the reproductive system essentially turns on. It does not necessarily mean that a person is physiologically ready for pregnancy and certainly doesn't mean that they are sociologically or mentally ready for parenting. It just means their reproductive um, system has started operating. Prior to that, the reproductive system doesn't, doesn't produce the gametes. Uh, the organs, remember, are the gonads. Those are these primary sex organs. Everything else is an accessory organ. All the other structures. Their job is to carry the gametes from the gonads to the site of fertilization. Okay? All right, so let's talk about during embryonic development, um, how the two sexes are similar. In the first eight weeks of development, you cannot visually distinguish whether a fetus is male or female. And the reason is that both sexes develop these two sets of tubes. Uh, this little oval thing is gonna turn into the gonad in both sexes. In the females, it will turn into ovaries. In the male, it will turn into testes, these two. Uh, this tube uh, becomes the vas deferens in the male, uh, and in the female, it goes away um, or becomes a ligament. This tube becomes the fallopian tube in the female. And this little end then wraps around the gonad, becomes the fimbri. And then at the bottom, there is this urogenital sinus that opens to the external environment. In the female, these two pink tubes, these mullerian ducts, these are going to fuse at the bottom and create the vagina and the uterus. If they do not fuse together completely, then a female could be born with two vaginas, two uteri, um, or, uh, or either of those. They could be both, two of both, or two, two of each, for example. So um, a woman could have one vagina and two uterus because this part fused, but this part didn't. And yes, that does happen. Um, if a certain gene is present, the sex determining region of Y, um, then the male gonads form. Uh, the, if that gene is present, then it gets turned on um, and uh, testosterone starts getting made and the structures, the pink tubes go away, the blue tubes become the gonads and the vas deferens. Um, the bottom parts develop into the accessory um, glands of the male reproductive system, and the urogenital sinus becomes the bladder. Okay? If this gene is not there, even if there is a Y chromosome, then the individual develop, will develop into a female, and it will be an absolutely normal female, even though they are, again, genetically XY. Okay? So remember, it's always more complicated. Okay? So it's very difficult to talk about what does biologically male or female mean because sometimes it's much more complicated than we were originally taught. Okay? Uh, these are pictures of early fetal development at five weeks. Again, you cannot tell the difference between male and female. 
And all of the structures of phylum chordata are present. Remember that all members of phylum chordata have gill slits or gill pouches. Those are visible here on this embryo. The tail does grow and then um, shrink away. It actually gets um, reabsorbed into the body. You can see the, um, the cord that becomes the vertebral column, and you can see the swelling here of the nerve cord that goes all the way down the back, okay? So all of those are the four characteristics of phylum chordata. As we get to about nine weeks, um, we see the hands that had been fused fingers and toes, those start to separate. Uh, the eyes, what was it just an eye spot, is starting to become a more developed eye. The brain is starting to develop a little more as a swelling at the end of the nerve cord. You can see what will become a heart is in there. It is pulsing, but it's not yet a an actual heart. We don't have a circulatory system. It is the it's cells that pulse together, but they're not, and that's what it, the heartbeat is when you hear it. But in technical terms, it's not actually a heart yet. But you can see the little ribs starting to develop in there. And then by 14 weeks, we have separate fingers and toes. We have very distinct arms and legs, a distinct um, torso, the head extremely large, but the brain is still completely smooth in here. It has not developed into the uh, wrinkled organ that we uh, are familiar with. But that's exactly the same in the male and female up to nine weeks, okay? Now, one thing to keep in mind, the date of the pregnancy is from the date of the last menstrual cycle, day one of the last menstrual cycle, which is the first day of menstrual bleeding. So remember that, let's say this is our menstrual cycle. Um, ovulation happens on day 14. So if this is day one, this is day 14. So ovulation happened here. Um, it can take another week to actually get pregnant, although it's usually within the next three or four days. So um, a person who is technically five weeks pregnant because we count the pregnancy, the gestation, from the date of the last period could actually have only been pregnant for a couple of weeks. Okay, so that's just something to just think about. That's another reason why women sometimes go, their pregnancies are longer or shorter than expected. This is an estimation of how long the woman has been pregnant. All right, and with that, I'm gonna stop there and uh, we will pick this up again in a minute.